As a patient, a parent, or a friend, you may learn that your doctor wants you, or someone you care about, to see a hematologist. Blood disorders touch a lot of people's lives at a lot of different points, and I'm sure that if you were to go to your neighbor or to your friend and ask them if they've ever had a problem with their blood, you'd be surprised to hear how many people have encountered a hematologist in their, in their life. I woke up, there was an excruciating pain, and initially I just thought it was muscle spasms, and the pain got progressively worse. He had a blood clot that went up to his yeah. lung. A hematologist in the traditional sense is a physician who's an expert in diseases of the blood. And these disorders of blood can be either benign disorders, bleeding problems, or clotting problems, or they can be malignant disorders, such as leukemias, for example. We're going to do some blood tests. The results of these blood tests will guide us. The hematologist approaches the patient not only by taking an entire medical history and examining the patient, but examining the blood. OK, here's the slime. OK, great. Let's see what it shows. And when you look down the microscope and you see the blood cells, you can get an entire history of the patient. So you get an enormous amount of information. So actually, her white cell count doesn't seem to be too bad. I woke up in the morning, I had that heart pain. I went to the doctor that told me it was bronchitis. Then they sent me home, came back to the hospital. Um, that's when they told me that I was going through the heart attack and all of that, and they transferred me here. Not too many people who are 20 years old have heart attacks, so it clearly it was great that you got to a doctor who understood what was going on and that you got treated. He's now doing great on blood thinners. Your blood clot formed in the vessel that supplies your heart with blood. Nothing intrinsic to your heart is causing us the problem. The problem is in the blood. We're now talking to his whole family and screening them for blood disorders so that if any of them um, have any of this predisposition, we can intervene on it before they have the heart attack, which is really ultimately the goal. I'm having a oh baby in two weeks, doctor. <laughs> That's yeah. wonderful. Possibly having another stroke. I'm always going to have to live with that fear. I'm always going to have to think, could this happen to me again? She's on these blood thinners. Mm -hmm. Is she at a higher risk of stroke? There is always a little bit of a risky right. period. It's because I always okay. think about there's the risk of bleeding um, and the risk of clotting. Yeah. See. It's nice to have the regular visits with Dr. DeSancho because, you know, she checks me out, she makes sure everything's going well, and when I get the results, I just know that it's good, and I feel, I feel good about things. Ezra has a blood disorder that he got from me that I got from my mom. That's family time. It's called hereditary spherocytosis. Hematology has played a huge part in our lives. In our huge... son wouldn't be alive with that. No. He was really at risk. He didn't have more than a couple weeks to live, they said. Let me take a look at you. OK. Ezra came to me. He was just about one year old. He was requiring transfusions every two to three weeks. He had no red blood cells. They were, they were going away at a fast and furious rate. Hey, Ezra. Can you come give me a big hug, since I'm so happy to see you? To see him walk in today as a well child, well, it brought back a lot of memories, and it is enormously gratifying. Any headaches, double vision? Among all Americans, approximately 1 in 1,500 to 1 in 2,000 newborns will be diagnosed with sickle cell anemia. How is it coming? Good, straight A's. Like straight A's. Staying on this protocol, it, it has dramatically improved her classroom performance, dramatically just Im improved everything. Everything in her life is just completely turned around. Mr. Townsend, how are you today? We've been in practice 30 plus years. The patients like coming close by. They don't like to have to drive miles away to be taken care of. We help patients one-to-one, -one, see them get to know their families, and they get to know us, and we know their problems, and we can take care of them quite well. Thank you very much. You've taken a look at this. My male cell lymphoma had returned. In many cases, when you have patients that come to us and have been through all of the standard treatments and, and have really been told there's nothing left to offer, and we meet with the patient and we say, well, we have a new drug that we're just learning about. It's very promising. Maybe we have some very preliminary data. Do you want to give it a try? I'm not ready to cash anything in yet, you know? 
It's very exciting to be able to take that patient and, in some cases, give them an option and give them a benefit that they wouldn't have otherwise had. They're always working on treatments that may be on the cutting edge or just about to be introduced, and that's such an exciting part of the whole system. Most excellent primary care physicians are completely capable of dealing with relatively routine problems that affect the blood. Individuals who are asked to see a hematologist are referred by primary care physicians um, because they have more complicated, more complex disorders than the primary care physician is able to diagnose or treat.